For those of you who don't know him, he was actually a member of the national speed skating team and proudly represented Canada in two Winter Olympics. This is the guy. Um, after he kind of hung up his skates, he went to uh, the Dentrist program at George Brown in Toronto. He graduated in 2014 and currently owns and operates McCabe Dentrin Implant Solutions in Cambridge, Ontario. And in five years, like five short years, Adam is now one of the leaders in Canada on dentures and also a key opinion leader for Dentist by Serrano. He's also one of the biggest names in implant prosthetics in Ontario and probably one of the big names in Canada and also speaks on the national stage. So, I mean, this is impressive in, in five years. And I think that this is probably Adam's first time speaking virtually. So uh, without further ado, I, I bring you guys Adam McCabe. Hey, thanks guys uh, for, uh, thank you Dr. Quack for introducing me there. That was very nice of you. Um, I didn't skate in two Olympics. I was the alternate, so I'm not quite an Olympian there, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, it's been a pleasure working with Dr. Quack, uh, Dr. Sumner, all these guys here, and thanks uh, for setting up this platform for all of us to kind of uh, improve our knowledge of dentistry and from all aspects of business straight to dentures. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is actually over dentures, and I'm just going to share my screen here. Specifically, CM locks. Um, I use CM locks quite a bit with Dr. Quek here. Uh, I've, we started out with locators, but I've, we've kind of transitioned into these uh, CM locks. The reason I like them, and we'll go into that a little uh, later, but why, why implants uh, as a denturist? Well, normal dentures just don't cut it for me. Uh, it's not, we're not rehabilitating that patient to a really functional level. And that's my why. I love implants. I love giving this patient uh, a restore uh, a denture that's actually going to work, give them their function, give them their uh, confidence back, and changing their lives. So the who is my patients. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm very honored to be speaking in front of all of you. I think they just ran out of people to talk, uh, so I was on the bottom of the list. But uh, my main thing isn't for to do these talks to promote myself it's to change patients lives and that's really what I'm out here to do the goal for me is to not only make a denture that works uh, that's going to uh, look nice but it's going to function and also last I want it to be uh, durable I don't want just to be getting those you know we all have those patients we're married to that you think of their name and the phone rings and something breaks. Um, my goal is to really kind of come up with different options that give them the functionality that they want, but also uh, the long-term success that we all hope for. We've all done these. My, I actually started out, uh, my dad was a denturist. He's done a ton of all on floors. I mean, this is Mark works, uh, Mark Chan's work here is beautiful wax up that I could not come close to if I tried. Um, but this is how we all picture an all on four, right? This is how we all want our all on fours to look like. Um, you know, he's even got the stippling and they just look gorgeous. The function is amazing. Patients love them. They love them. The teeth in the day, it's amazing. And don't get me wrong, I do them. I, I've done many of them and a lot of them are great. Here it is finally processed. I mean, just absolutely beautiful uh, work by Mark. But in reality, this happens with them. Not every case, but a lot of the time this happens. And of course, this happens on your busiest day at the clinic, right? Your waiting room's full, you're already behind, and that patient calls and says, something broke in my fixed case. Now you have to fit the time to get them in your chair, unscrew it, and I mean, hopefully, like this is the worst case scenario, where you're in implant failure and bar to break. Um, or delamination, right? It's their front tooth. It's not just an easy denture repair. It's not just they come in, you take it, take it up to the lab, repair it, insert it. No, you have to either drill the access holes out, unscrew it, take it upstairs. You know, hopefully you have their model that you can screw it back onto and repair it and then screw it back in, torquing them back in. Maybe it's changing new screws, all of those things that we have to do. Here's uh, one from uh, Big Box Dentistry. I mean, we can see the issues that this patient is having. Uh, we have more of a concave aspect to it and 
kind of different parts. We got abutment level, implant level, and you can definitely see how this patient would have issues cleaning it. This is actually the same case, uh, a flange on there. So of course that patient's going to have issues, but another uh, thing that comes up with uh, fixed cases is, you know, a lot of these now with my dad retiring, these patients have had their fixed cases for 15 years. And what, one thing that maybe sometimes we uh, fall short on, I know I, I, I'm sure I do as well, is telling these patients that this isn't forever. This, that they will have to get a new denture at some point, especially if it's on natural teeth. Uh, we want the denture to wear down, not anything else. And what happens is their back teeth wear down and so now their bite becomes overclosed in the front and those front teeth keep popping off. You can repair these and repair these, but it's gonna keep happening. Uh, you gotta remember with a fixed case, there's no give, nothing's moving. And so the weakest point is probably gonna be those chiclets there at the front. Um, the other issue is the bars. Now, don't get me wrong here, I'm not hating on fixed cases, it's just, they are complicated. You really have to take your time and know what you're doing. You can't rush anything. Um, and you can make a really thick bar. You have all your, your spacing. But if that bar isn't passive, if your impression isn't perfect, you can still break titanium. And that's when you're in some really issues. Uh, here's a case where, you know, the sandblasted the interfaces uh, to the abutments. Well, that's not going to lead to anything. You need a nice, tight fit. I've had, these have happened so many times to me, the delamination, you know, and the patient paid good money for this. This isn't a cheap restoration and they're wondering why things are breaking off and they want it fixed now. Uh, a lot of these people probably got teeth in a day and they want it repaired really quick. Again, a bar not fitting well and breaking titanium. Another issue we have with them is cleanliness. Now, um, we have to understand that for a lot of our patients, they didn't take the best care of their teeth, right? So now we're gonna stick in something that needs even more hygiene than their natural teeth. Um, now this has a little bit of concave, but how is that patient supposed to clean that? And how can we trust that that patient is going to clean that all the time and come for their every you know six months cleaning and you know, taking the denture off and giving it a good uh, cleaning up in the lab. So that's why I want to talk about removable overdentures. Um, I love removable overdentures. I think they can function just as well as fixed, um, but we get the cleanliness and able to take care of them, easy maintenance, easy repairs. There's many different anchoring systems out there. Today I'm going to be talking about CM Lock. Um, I, it's a product I really, really enjoy. I find it's kind of minimized some of the issues I was having with, you know, our average locator cases. This is an abutment. So uh, they come in from one millimeter to five millimeters. So if you are a dentist placing your own implants, don't bury them too, too far. You don't want to get a custom abutment made. Um, the, this is the, them compared to a locator. So around the same height, I mean, the actual abutment themselves is lower profile, but when you put the cap on there, uh, it is around the same height as uh, a locator. Now you can see on the right there, it's called the CM Lock Flex. I'm gonna be showing you a case I actually used this on. It's a really nice option if budget is um, an issue and the implant's at quite an angle and you can't, you know, the patient can't afford to get a custom abutment made. Um, it can really rescue some cases for us. Uh, here's it showing the, the angulations that we can get. So on a normal CM lock, you can have a divergence of 40 degrees for these to work properly. Uh, I believe with locators, it's around 20 degrees. So it gives you that little extra. And then with the CM lock flex, it gives you that extra little, uh, safety net of 60 degrees. Now, hopefully for the most part, your implants are um, a little straighter than that, but again, it happens. The real world isn't perfect. These are the housings that go on top of the abutments that are inside the denture. You'll see that they're, they're pink. 
the nice thing about that is if you don't, you know, if they're a little bit too buckly or labial, it blends really nicely into the acrylic so you don't have that little black shadow there. Just like your locators, it has different retentions. The difference here is they're made out of pectin. Um, the durability of these is amazing. The nice thing too about these is if you have a locator case that you're struggling on, you don't have to change the actual locator abutment or uh, Novalock abutment. These fit great on your locator abutments. So some cases that I'm having an issue with maintaining uh, the retention I'd like, uh, over a period of time, I've been actually uh, changing the housings to CM locks to, and I've been finding I've been having a lot of success with it. Um, again, it, they insert, you remove them exactly the same as a locator, uh, the different strengths, uh, very, very easy to work with and that's what I'm looking for. They also have, uh, the Elitor, I believe it's called. I apologize if I messed up that name. This is a gold cap that fits into the, the same housing. And these, you can have three different levels of uh, retention. You just kind of twist it there. You'll see the one dot, two dot, three dot. And you can kind of play around with that instead of changing the inserts over and over. So it may, this might be nice for someone who uh, can't come to your office all the time. They might live far away. You can give them a tool and they can kind of tighten it up over time. Now these are the tools you would need to kind of work with these is you need the driver, um, the flex driver. Uh, as a denturist, these tools are kind of the ones I work with. It's the tool, the multi-tool for removing the inserts and inserting them. And that is so quick. Uh, when I have a patient come in for their annual exam or if they're having an issue with these, I just pop them out, put them back in. It almost is too quick that I like the patient not to think it's that easy. <laughs> so in a term that we have in dentures, I might draw the denture and go do some other things uh, and come down. So it made it look like it was a little harder for me to do than it actually was. Um, this is the tool for those gold caps to tighten it. Now again, you can order these for your patients uh, through Swiss and F, uh, ask Chris, and also these uh, model analogs. So if you're taking an impression and you need to pour a model, again, you can use these to replicate the patient's mouth. This is a great tool for determining heights um, and angulations. Right here, this tool will actually pivot, and so you can see how far off parallel you are to the other implants. These lines here are about a millimeter apart up to the five millimeter. So right there, you know how, what height of abutment you should use for this case, or if you should have the flex abutment. Again, always go from the highest part of the tissue, uh, that measure you want one millimeter above the highest point of any of the tissue. Again, the CM abutments work great on multi-platforms of implants. Uh, you don't have to use one implant to make these work. They are great for many, many implants. As a dentist, I don't place my own abutments. Um, I, I just have the belief that it's the surgeon's implant. If something does go wrong during torque test, they're more equipped to uh, handle that. And I don't like tough phone calls and saying, hey, that implant's spinning when I torqued it in. Um, again, have I done it? Sure. Uh, but for the most part, when Dr. Quack places an implant for me, he likes to, uh, we both would rather him place the abutment. Again, though, that has, goes back to what we were talking about earlier and the relationship you have with your surgeon and the denturist or dentist and your surgeon, however that may work for you. Um, you have to have a nice workflow. And that's the one thing that I think Dr. Queck and I have really established is we see eye to eye on a lot of things. If we don't, it's a very open conversation and we come to a solution. The patient's first, not our egos. You know, if I think this should be done a certain way, well, I, it's, very easy for me to call up Dr. Quack and mention it to him. And we have a very good conversation about that to 
again, make this prosthesis functional and last as long as we can. I tend to pick up my dentures in the mouth. Um, I like the control I have there. I can check to see how the fit is, how the occlusion is, if anything's binding. All of those things I can check in the mouth instead of taking an impression, pouring up that impression, making it on a model, and then processing it on the model. Um, I just find uh, I like doing it in the mouth. Uh, these are some products I use. QuickUp is an amazing product. It's really strong, but again, on the pricier side of things. I use chair side pickup material for I'd probably say about 90% of my pickups. Uh, great material. Um, you just have to make sure you make an undercut in the denture. Um, the color match is fairly decent. Nothing that you know your patients are going to really uh, complain about. It's about three to five minutes intraoral time and uh, it works amazing, it's very quick. Uh, easy pickup, another great product. Another use for this product, if you're trying to get the best bang for your buck, especially after this whole COVID thing, is these are great for making uh, CBCT markers. They're radio-opaque, so you can put them on the outside of the denture instead of using beads. Now, unfortunately, before this whole COVID thing, I didn't know I was gonna be doing a talk on removables. So you're gonna have to forgive me, some of these pictures aren't mine, um, but this is kind of the same idea of how I would pick up a CM lock or a locator case or a Nova lock, whatever you decide to use. Uh, the abutments are placed. They usually will come to my office from Dr. Quex. I'll put on the housings and those block out rings. Those come in the kit, so it's not like you have to order anything extra. The kit, the processing kits you can get from, you know, Chris is on here from Swiss and F. Uh, they set you up real nice with everything. All I do is I put these on, and then with the dentures, I grind some holes and I seat it in the mouth. I get the patient to bite down, make sure the occlusion's there. There's no rocking or binding. Sometimes I'll use a little occlusal spray to see if anything's hitting. I want a nice um, relief around the housing that I can fit the material in. Another tip I would say is drill a hole through the lingual of the denture so it allows the air to flow out. You will have a little excess material come through that hole, but that's okay, just wipe it up with your finger once you uh, place the denture in. So I'll put the chair side material into the holes here, seat it over top of the housings and ask the patient to bite down. Not clench, not really fold it in there, just a nice light even pressure to hold to secure the denture. Now nine times out of 10, the patient's gonna start talking to you because they have to hold it for about three to five minutes and they hate staying closed for three to five minutes. So constantly remind them, please stay closed, please keep even pressure. And during that time, you're saying your prayers, hoping that you put the block out rings on, no undercuts and that the, you're not gonna lock this in. Um, that's probably why I've lost a little bit of my hair there. What you're hoping for is this at the end, a nice happy patient, you didn't hurt them, you take it out, change the inserts to whatever color you feel appropriate for that patient. I usually start them off on a low to medium retention, just so they can kind of get used to the, you know, inserting and taking them out. If they're home that night the first time trying to take them out, a lot of anxiety can kind of happen. They're thinking they're going to pull those implants out. Um, so I like to kind of you know, train them and then I'll see them in the next day or two and we can kind of adjust the, the tensions from there. So some of the issues that can kind of come up and it's not this product per se, it's just this is what happens with removable dentures. You got to remember they're coming in and out daily, uh, hopefully. So you know, we can see here on a locator, we're getting all that gold worn off. We're getting wear. What can happen? What causes some of this? Well, it can be that, you know, a clinician air. We maybe didn't snap on those housings properly when we were picking them up or processing in the, the lab. So it's binding a little bit on one side. It's rubbing there. Or the implants are a little divergent. Or it can be the patient just hasn't come back. They've had these things for five years, never got the inserts changed, the nylons inserts changed, and now it's rubbing and wearing them down. 
nice thing. It's a very easy fix. You change the abutments and you're usually ready to go. So we're talking about the inserts that are done on uh, the CM locks. Uh, they're made out of pectin, where these ones here are made out of nylon. Now, this is what usually you'll see after about a year, especially if the patient is a smoker. They start out that nice pink and they turn into this kind of brownie, yucky, br brittle kind of material. And same with the blues. Um, that happens over time with these inserts. And that's what I've been finding with the CM locks is with the pectin insert, I'm not getting this as much. Some other issues we have is patients not cleaning that little center hole there. And if you have the locator insert that has that nipple, it's not gonna seat proper, okay? So then that patient comes to you saying, my dentures don't fit. I find this usually happens with a patient who's their first denture, um, their first implant denture, I should say. Um, usually you just take a little explore, air gun, blow it out and it snaps on and they think you're a miracle worker. Um, the other thing is the divergence. Like we said in, uh, like I said earlier, with the locator, you get about 20 degrees before things can really start kind of getting a little iffy and you're gonna wear down those uh, inserts quickly. Uh, and then also patient care. Uh, you need those patients to come in for the regular hygiene, okay? Again, like we were saying earlier, is the fixed cases, you know, one of the issues I have is a lot of these patients didn't take care of their natural teeth. What makes me think that they're actually going to take care of these implants? And that's why I do like a removable, but even the removable, sometimes they don't take care of their locator abutments. This is a very old school Nobel Procera bar. Um, now you can see here in the, the up uh, by the bar there in the vestibule, you know, that is a lot of uh, material, food debris, black tartar, whatever you want. And so this is definitely a candidate that I would not want a fixed case for because they can remove and see all that, but yet they're not cleaning that. The, in the back corner here, you can see one of the locators is wearing out. And this is credit to Mark Chan. Uh, thank you, Mark, again, for your amazing photography and amazing cases. And same, you know, he's got a little buckle food trap going on there. Back here, we can see we have a precision attachment. Um, you know, my dad, who's an RDT, he's kind of specialized in these uh, precision attachments. They're amazing if you know how to work with them. Again, also making sure now you have the stock of all these different, you know, attachments is definitely difficult. Um, so now I don't really uh, uh, treatment plan any of these kind of things. I kind of keep it simple. So my stock of replacement parts is very accessible, easy to maintain, so that if you do have that emergency patient who just shows up saying their denture's loose, it's an easy fix for you. This is what his denture had. I mean, it was great. Uh, I have no issues with it. Old school denture, mesh, uh, locator uh, inserts, extended range. Now you can start seeing that these are getting a little warm. You know, they're getting, a, they're not as fresh as they used to be. Same with the precision attachments here. That's a not a nylon, things bend, warp, uh, that can cause the denture not to seat properly. Here's a great picture Mark took is showing the kind of the swelling of the nylon caps due to the saliva and everything like that. So what Mark did here is he put on a CM lock abutment. The one difference you're going to see is there's no hole there. There's no food trap for that. All the retention happens around the outside, which I think is amazing. Same thing on the other side. Now this is after about a year and a bit in the mouth. This patient is a heavy smoker. Everything here is pectin. So all Mark really had to do was he did a little glass bead sandblast and things as good as new. If all my dentures look this clean and that easy to clean after a year, I'd be thrilled, especially with a heavy smoker. The one thing I do want you to take from this is the inserts. The inserts are, uh, the original inserts. They're not worn, they don't look swollen, and they still say have the same retention. Denture after a year and a half heavy smoker, I'm okay with that. I think that looks pretty darn good. Here we're showing, uh, I'm not a big numbers guy. For me, the proof's in the pudding, in the mouth. Um, you know, the nylon caps 
the, the sorption of water is definitely a lot higher than the pectin. Same with the, how many times they go in and out of the mouth. Um, these are, uh, the colors are the uh, CM lock inserts and the gray is a nylon cap. So you can see quite the drop off. Again, I'm not a big numbers guy, but it, it's definitely kind of nice to see that. Same with your implants are on an angle. You can see that the CM locks on the 20 degree angles, they maintain their tightness over time compared to a nylon cap and also even if they are perfectly parallel. Another great option for removables, which I love because you're thinking about the future, and that's how I like to treatment plan my patients, is long-term success. How about an implant retained partial? No clasps, and in this case, this patient, for the most part, in the future, is going to lose those lower teeth. And now, they already have two implants we can use. So if they do lose those teeth, they're already set up for a two implant overdenture, or you can add more implants later on. And the patient will love that. They'll never have to go with that floppy denture. So I've been finding that we've been treatment planning a lot more implant retained partials, because also the patients don't wanna show uh, those clasps. And it also helps maintain those teeth because you're maintaining the bone there, right? Not my case, but amazing. Uh, I, that, it's going to be a lot more stable than class retained partial. This is an amazing case by Mark Chan. Um, it just shows you what you can do now with removables. This is a, a Panthera bar. Uh, they do incredible work, but with some CM lock attachments on there. All digital CAD CAM design. So these, this is going to friction fit onto that bar. This is a Dr. Barzilli or. A, I forget, Mark, I apologize. Prosthodontist in London, his case. But Bartolozzi, that's it. And, uh, you know, these attachments, this will work like a fixed case. And the patient, again, can remove it, clean it, soak the denture, and no issues uh, that we might have with a fixed case. I'm just going to do a very, very quick overview, kind of from uh, insertion of abutments to the final restorations if you were to do it in the lab. You would use your tools to find the heights you want, torque the uh, abutment in, put on your impression copings. Now, I still like to use the locator wine uh, cup impression copings. I just like that it has this little extra to grip onto. Uh, I just find I don't have to worry about that impression coping moving in my impression too much. Take the impression, your lab analogs, pour your model, and then process. Um, works a lot of the time, but again, I like to do it the chair side way. I have the control. I can see if anything's kind of going wrong, maintaining the inclusion. This is a real life case of, you know, one of my first digital dentures. It was a, it's not my best case, but it's a real life case of how using these abutments really kind of helped me out. This is a, my dad's old patient. She had the old Cassic gold bar, um, but unfortunately um, this happened. And my dad uh, put on Rhine balls. Uh, we use a lot of Rhine balls. Uh, he loved them for your two implant overdentures. But again, they wear down and they're very tricky to work with making sure they're parallel when you're picking them up and not getting things locked in an undercut, hence the bald head. And she also had this little treat for me. Um, definitely a lot of bone loss, quite the angle. Sent her to her GP, I needed everything checked out. She understood that this was probably going to be uh, not with her for long, but she wanted to use it if the GP said it was okay. He gave me the go ahead, so what we did was we put some CM, uh, uh, CM lock abutments on, and I used the, the flex abutment here. I was able to tilt that in, make it uh, more parallel, so we could have a decent path of insertion. This is how you do it. You uh, have this little guide you put on, snap on, tilt it to the angle you want, inject cement, Whatever your cement curing time is, snap it off, and that abutment is set to the angle you want. 
Now this is it. This is an Avident Mill Digital Denture. Is it my very best looking denture? No, but again, I wanted something that was nice and strong in that weak area because they do have that compressed acrylic that's about six to eight times stronger than a conventional denture. You can see how little room I had to work with there. And this is the final denture. Is it my best work? Absolutely not. She loved it. Um, and it was probably one of my very, very first digital dentures. And Mark Chan will be talking more about the digital dentures that we do at our clinic. I don't want to kind of steal his presentation. So a little teaser for you. Thank you to Chris from Swiss and F for hooking me up on this one. He helped me a ton. This is a very, very fun case um, I did with Dr. Quack. A little backstory. This patient was a severe, severe gagger. I uh, couldn't handle brushing his teeth properly, so his teeth kind of uh, you know, deteriorated, and we had to extract all his teeth. Most people would say, hey, let's do a fixed case. Um, my thought process on that was, he's already having trouble brushing his natural teeth. Now he's gonna have a big hunk of plastic in there, and he's gonna have to you know, use a water pick, get in there, proxy brush. I didn't know how well he would handle cleaning it. Uh, and I just thought he'd neglect it and I'd be running into issues. So I took a chance. Uh, we decided to do a removable where I figured two seconds, he can pop it out, soak the denture, clean the denture. Now he doesn't have as much in his mouth to handle uh, to get around for brushing and maintenance. So again, that's where I was kind of thinking of long-term success. He understood this wasn't going to be a teeth in a day thing. But I think what the really cool aspect we were able to do with the digital dentures was I couldn't take an impression on him. Heck, I couldn't get a mouth mirror in his mouth. How am I supposed to take an impression? So, or bite blocks. Um, what we did actually was Dr. Quek used the prime scan and we used uh, in lab 20 or in lab, uh, I think 819 at this time, so I apologize. And Dr. Quek scanned everything got him to do a virtual bite and it showed up on my computer. And now I was able to kind of do a try-in. And what I did was a printed try -in. Now this isn't the same patient, I apologize. I didn't take enough pictures for this case, but you can see this is a printed try -in. The nice thing about this is I can load it to those implants. I can see how this patient's going to do with them. I don't make them too pretty because I don't want them walking off with this. I want them to come back. And you know, I can address a lot of issues that I can't address with a wax trying. I can really see how they do with mastication, that lip support, functionality, aesthetics, you know, uh, working and balancing, whatever you kind of prescribe to in terms of what you do in your tryings. I can address this and I don't have to worry about teeth popping off or not fitting proper. What, you know, I'm getting the most accurate result I can get. And I can tell that patient, Go home for a couple of days, eat a few meals, see what the family thinks, and really we can address those issues now instead of processing a normal denture and then addressing the issues after. So this is a milled Avident denture. This is the insertion. You know, for a person I couldn't handle bite blocks, you know, or impression or anything, it was just a prime scan, no models, nothing taken. I'm pleased with it. Uh, you know, the midline, lower and upper midline, little off. I'm okay with that. Patient was thrilled. Uh, is it not fully extended? I mean, I probably could do a little better if I was able to take a normal, you know, custom tray PBS impression. But again, this worked for the patient. The patient is very happy. The only complaint they really had was it was too tight. Uh, no gagging issues. So he came back uh, after, and I actually put the, a very uh, low tentative cap in there. Would I love to put a frame, everything like that? Absolutely, 100%. But again, they're just this is real world. I didn't have the space to kind of put all that material in. And again, the Avident digital denture is monolithic. Everything's one piece. I don't have to worry about the teeth popping off. And I always have this person's dentures on file, which is, I think, amazing if they do lose them anything happens, it's not starting back from square one. And this is the final result. I mean, I'm pleased with that for not taking an impression. You know, this is usually a case that I would probably have to refer to either uh, 
general anesthesiologist to knock the patient out, prosthodontist who can you know, uh, uh, administer some drugs to relax them or do whatever. But now it allows me to do that. And this patient is able to remove them, clean them properly, not run into the same issues they did when they had their natural teeth. Yes, the lower lip was a little um, protruded there, so I took down the labial flange. But again, this patient's happy, eating functionally again, and doing the proper maintenance. So again, long-term success, functional, all those things that I want to in when I'm restoring a patient. Uh, again, this is thanks to digital. I'm not gonna go into digital too, too much, uh, as Mark's gonna talk about that later. So what I want you to kind of take home from this webinar uh, about CM locks is hygiene, hygiene. I think that's a huge thing we have to look at for long-term success. Those retentative caps, they last and they can rescue you from some pretty tricky things. Instead of seeing that patient every couple months to put in new nylon inserts, you know, these do uh, stand the test of time. The pectin inserts, like I said, it's a high performance polymer. Uh, you can use that, you can change it, the one, the, the gold one, and also uh, up to 60 degrees uh, compensation, which is amazing for those really tricky cases. Again, thank you very much. Be safe during this time. I hope we all can get, you know, see each other's work online when we get back to work in people's mouths. If you wanna follow us on Instagram, or connect on Facebook, or just email me. I'm more than happy to talk to you. And uh, again, thank you very much for listening to my talk.